Um, so I'm Adrian Halkin. I am an environmental historian working on the McMurdo Dry Valley's LTR, and Mike has asked me to give a brief introduction to some of the historical influence legacy work we are doing at McMurdo. So just some um, news to start with. The 2019-2020 season was completely cancelled due to the pandemic. So this was the first time since the 1950s there was no scientific work taking place in the dry valleys. This year, um, we have 10 people who have recently arrived in Antarctica. Um, they got there last week after three weeks in quarantine. They will be doing the work normally done by about 30, over 30 people. So they're going to have a, a busy season coming up. We've also been awarded an equipment grant to enhance our field sensor network. Um, and we are working on the renewal proposal MCM6, in which three of the current co-PIs will be rolling off and we will be bringing five new ones into the project. So lots of new ideas and new energy. So when we think about historical influences and legacies in the dry valleys, it's often seen as a completely pristine um, environment, the sort of definition of a place with no people. But when you look for it, um, it is possible to see plenty of influences um, of humans on the McMurdo Dry Valleys, often associated um, with the scientific work and the associated logistics taking place in the region, and very often focused on field camps and experiment sites where we do our work. So as part of McMurdo 5, uh, we wanted to have a look at some of the, um, the legacies of these human impacts on the Dry Valley environment. And this was sort of the, the model for what we were expecting to see. Um, basically, uh, contemporary field sites um, where we are doing the work at the moment, we expected species diversity to be quite impacted and to be quite low. Um, experiment sites to be similarly impacted, but less of, a, less of an impact. And then the further back in time you go, we expected some recovery to take place in terms of species diversity. So this was sort of the model we were working with um, on this uh, project. Next. So we managed to identify six sites in the dry valleys. Five of them are former field camps that have been removed um, usually about 20 to 30 years ago. Um, and one experiment site, the Commonwealth Dry Valley Drilling Project, where there was a, a, a big impact 45 um, years ago. And um, we use these to try and assess the legacy of human impacts. We used historical photos to identify the exact location of the sites. And then we took soil samples at the center of the impact at five meters, at 15 meters, and at 45 meters from that impact. We then assessed the, um, the soil samples, both counting nematodes and looking at the bacterial abundance in the, in the soils. And what we found, these are slides showing all of the samples um, put together. And as you can see, the, there is a, a trend in the nematode, um, total live nematodes away from the center of disturbance towards a, a greater number of, of nematodes, the further away you get from the impact. Uh, when you look at bacteria, we see no clear trend at all. And we can look at these, uh, the, the nematode and bacteria at, at a site by site basis. And this basically uh, reinforces what we see when we put them all together. Uh, only two of the impacts at Meserve and Mears show a decrease in the nematode numbers the further away you get. And uh, both of those sites have special uh, considerations. And again, we see no trend in terms of bacterial diversity across the sites. So the preliminary conclusions from this work are that sites impacted by periods of intense human activity that ended 23 to 45 years ago appear to show a legacy of this impact in the present. Uh, the bacterial communities would seem to be more resilient than invertebrate communities. The sample size, unfortunately, is probably not large enough to draw definitive conclusions about the legacy of different durations of impacts or the time since removal. But we do think that results from this study can be used to inform the environmental management of the McMurdo Dry Valleys going into the future. Thank you very much.